All right, so now we're gonna talk about unit five, quiz two. So this is just a quick overview. Now on question number one, that's the definition of a parabola. And again, it's in your notes, uh, precisely the one that talks about the relationship between uh, a fixed point and the fixed line, which is what we call the directrix. So look up the definition, but that is true. Given a fixed point and a fixed line, a parabola consists of all points that are equidistant to the fixed point and the fixed line. That's true, okay? Now on the next one, there's a couple of ways to do that. I think probably one of the easiest way that the students can do would just be to find the vertex. Remember the vertex has this formula, which I'm gonna keep using quite a bit in this uh, quiz, right? So we have to find the vertex. Let me change that to a different color. To find the vertex, we have this formula is negative B over two A. And then we have F of negative b over 2a. So now remember where a, b, and c are the coefficients of a quadratic. And so that's what we mean. So anyways, in this case, negative b would be negative 4 over 2 times a, a being also 2. So this would be negative 4 over 4, which is 1. All right, so that's the x coordinate of the vertex. Now to find the y coordinate of the vertex, this part right here, what that actually means is that you're gonna plug in whatever you get for the x coordinate, which is this, right? And then we're gonna plug that in for x. So we're gonna replace every x on here with a one in this case. So that's what that formula means, right? We're gonna find what the x value is which is by doing the formula negative b over 2a. And whenever we find that, we're going to use that number that we got for the x value and plug it in to figure out our y value. So let's see, we have a two here, a four, and a five. So that would be a, a nine, 11. Yeah, so it's a, so it's two, four, six, eight, 11. So that's the answer for that one. We're moving on. Now on this one, it says that it has the, we have a minimum at x is equal to four. Well, here's the deal. If this is negative, right? Remember a negative means that you have an upside down parabola, right? And that upside down parabola has only a maximum, right? So I don't really care what that is. So this is false because again, this actually has a maximum because the negative in front of the x squared would make it a negative quadratic or an upside down parabola. Now, if that would have been a positive, then you could have at least uh, found the, the vertex, at least the x coordinate of the vertex, by using the same formula to figure out if a four would have been that point, All right? But again, since this is a negative quadratic and it's an upside down parabola and an upside down parabola has a maximum, not a minimum, okay? Moving on to question number four, and I think this is where a lot of people probably start getting stuff wrong. So it's, it's asking what is the value of P? Notice that it says the focal point, all right? So we're looking for the focal point on this. To figure out the focal point, you need two things. You need to know the vertex, you need to know the, fo uh, the focal length. Now, to figure out the vertex, I'm gonna do negative B over two A, okay, same formula that I had earlier. Now in this case, A is zero, excuse me, B is zero. And the reason why is because I do not have an X value here. So I could actually write this like this if I wanted to. So therefore B is zero over two times one fourth, zero divided by a number is zero. So that's the X coordinate of the vertex. Now the Y coordinate of the vertex, if I plug in a zero, and to that function, I would get one fourth times zero squared minus seven. Well, that's equal to negative seven. So my vertex is zero comma negative seven, all right? Now the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out my focal length. And the focal length has this formula, which I think 
Some people just didn't know the formula, and if you didn't really know the formula, you really had no chance at this. Right, where C prime, or that C with a little one as the power, which is what I'm calling C prime, is the focal length. Right, so I'm solving for C prime right now. Now A, A is this number right here. So I have one fourth is equal to one fourth C prime. Now, one way to do this is to cross multiply. Now surprisingly, when I talk to a lot of people, I realize that some people don't even know how to cross multiply. So you're gonna multiply that number times that number, which you get four C prime times one is just four C prime. And you're gonna multiply this number times this number. Four times one is four. And then you're gonna solve for C prime by dividing both sides by four. So remember, when you cross multiply, at least when you first cross multiply, if you ended up with a fraction somehow, you're doing something wrong, all right? That's where you should get. So now, if I solve for C prime, I get C prime is equal to one. So here's how you figure out your focal point, all right? This is a parabola that looks something like this, right? This point right here is what we said was zero comma negative seven. So my focal point is going to be equal to my vertex, or to be precise, the y coordinate of the vertex, plus my focal length. Meaning, that number right there, I'm just gonna add a one to it. So my focal point is gonna be zero comma negative six. So P is negative six. All right, so that's pretty much it for that because the focal point would be located in this case, it would be located right there, right inside that parabola, if you will. All right, the next one is called the directrix. So the directrix is gonna follow a similar path, okay? Where I'm gonna have to figure out what the vertex is and I'm gonna have to figure out what the, um, what the focal length is, so. Same thing, I'm gonna do negative b over 2a. b is again zero. So zero divided by 2a, two times negative 12. Well, two divided by any number is zero. So I still get a zero here, okay? Now to figure out my y coordinate, I'm gonna plug it in. So if I were to plug in a zero for x, and I think a lot of you can hopefully see where this is going. You just get one. So my vertex, remember the vertex is either the lowest point or the highest point in the parabola, depending on what the shape is. So my vertex is zero comma one. All right, so just so we're clear, this right here in the previous problem, that was the vertex. All right, just in case we didn't know that either. And the green dot that I have there, that would be my focal point. Anyway, now to figure out the rest of it, I have to figure out the focal length. All right, so I'm gonna come over here, do the same formula for focal length. If you remember, the formula was this again. All right, so on this one, A is negative 112. We're going to cross multiply yet again. So if I multiply, or cross multiply like that, I would end up with a negative four C prime. And if I mul cross multiply this number times that number, I get a 12, All right? So C prime is equal to negative three. All right, so here's what that means. Your directrix is equal to the y coordinate of the vertex minus my focal length. So therefore, in this case, since I have a zero one, and to be, I'm just gonna add it to the y coordinate, okay? Not the x coordinate. So that will be one minus a negative three, which is gonna make that a positive four, okay? 
So in this case, because I have a negative, if you wanted to see what I'm talking about, this would be, this parabola would look something like that. This would be the vertex, okay? And the directrix, instead of being at, um, excuse me, the directrix would be four, to be precise, y is equal to four, which would be above this line over here. So this would be the line y is equal to four, and that would be my directrix. And my focus would be inside of here, but they're not asking us for the focal point, so we wouldn't write that. So the answer is four. All right, next up. If coefficient a in the general quadratic equation is one over 48, all right, guess what formula I'm gonna use? This formula again. What is the focal length? So this one just wants to know the focal length. So same old thing, one over 48 is equal to one over four C prime, cross multiply, and then solve for C prime. So C prime would be 12, if you divide both sides by four, so 12. Moving on down, complete the square. Hopefully a lot of you didn't miss it. Remember to complete the square, you're gonna grab this middle term you're gonna divide it by two, and then you're gonna square it. So this would be five squared, which is 25. So to complete the square, you would have to add a 25. All right, on question number eight, they want you to write this in vertex form. And so you have a couple of ways, right? You can find the vertex the same way that we did that uh, with this formula earlier. So you can do that if you want to. All right, and that's where if you want to do that, I'm going to complete the square only because and on the next one, I can show you how to do the same thing, but just uh, by finding the vertex, um, by using the vertex formula, that is. So to complete the square, remember, you're going to write these two in parentheses. Okay, and then you're going to grab that middle term. You're going to divide it by two, and then you're going to square it. So this would be negative three squared, which is nine. So this is gonna be x squared minus six x plus nine plus five. Now, because I added a nine, I have to also subtract a nine, okay? And that would give me x squared minus six x plus nine. And that would be a negative four here. Now, if we factor, x squared minus six plus nine, I would end up with an x minus three, x minus three, minus four, and x minus three times x minus three can be written as x minus three squared minus four. Now, the reason that I know there is no, or a is one right here, for example, is the fact that in front of the x squared, I had a coefficient of one. So if the function is written in standard form, which is what we call this, and the coefficient in front of the x squared is one, then this a is also one, all right? So this would be one, let's see, h, in my case would be three, right? So remember, they want you to write it in this form, and then k would be negative four. Okay, so notice that even though my answer has a negative three, there's already a negative there, so I don't need to write write it as a negative three. I don't need to keep it as positive three. All right. Now, question number nine, you could also do it with, um, what do you call it? Complete the square. But on this one, I'm going to find the vertex instead just to show you two ways to do it, right? So to find the vertex, again, negative B over 2A. So I'm rewriting this formula yet again. Right, and let's let's see if we can figure that out. So it's gonna be positive 60. So negative of a negative 60 is gonna become a positive over 2a. This will be negative six. So this will be 60 over negative 12, which is negative five. Okay, so now we have this negative five. To figure out my y coordinate, and this is the part that the numbers might be kid a little big here. I'm gonna plug in a negative five for every x in the function itself. All 
Okay, so let's see. Six times 25. I don't know. Six times 25. Remember, you have to square first in case you're wondering. So this you have to square first. Let's see, this will be positive 300. This will be minus 151. And six times 25, let's see. Oh, well, that's 150. But let's say that I didn't know that. So we have negative 150 plus 300 minus 151. Negative 150 plus 300 is positive 150. Minus 151. So this is negative one. So my vertex would be negative five comma negative one. Now to write it in vertex form, I would write this as y is equal to negative six. Now, how do I know it's negative six? Remember what I told you earlier. If that number in front of the x squared value, which is the a term, is already a negative six, this would also have to be a negative six, right? All right, so now we have x minus my vertex. Now, my vertex says negative five, which is gonna make this a positive five. Think about it, if I plug in a negative five for h, negative of a negative makes it a positive. And then plus k, well, plus k would actually be minus one or plus negative one. So this would be a negative six. In my case, this would be a negative five, and this would be a negative one. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, this last one, now once you write this in standard form, I think the only way to do this to, is to figure out the vertex. Uh, one little tricky thing is this is negative three, and for example, this is one. They were going up by halves. So if I were to write this in vertex form, I have y is equal to a, x plus three squared, plus one. Don't forget that I wrote a plus three on purpose. It wasn't an accident because on a, on a quadratic or any really any other transformation, if I write plus three, that means to the left three, which means it's, uh, that the vertex is at negative three. But anyway, to figure out the say value, there's really a couple of ways to do this, whichever one you prefer. You can, point, uh, you can pick a point on the graph like perhaps this one. And the reason I'm picking that one is it looks like it's a whole number. And then you would plug that in. So for example, that point would be, let's see, negative two comma, three. And then you would plug that in for X and Y and then solve for A. So notice I'm gonna do what's inside the parentheses first. Negative two plus three is one. One squared is one. So this is gonna be a plus one. So a is equal to two. So final answer would be y is equal to two. X plus three squared plus one. All right, please notice that this right here would be written over here Oh wait, and this they want this in standard form, forget. Uh, the other way that you can find the vertical stretch, by the way, is that if you notice that this right here, you're going over one and up two, because on the original, and this might be harder for you guys to understand, so I don't blame you if you don't understand this, but if this is my parent function, If I pretend like this point right here is zero, zero. Okay, then this distance is one. So this would be gone. This is not gonna change. This stays the same. But the fact that instead of going up one, I'm looking at this number right here. Instead of going up one, like to that point, I went up two. That means that I'm being stretched by a factor of two. But again, that's, that's a little bit hard to understand, I think, for most people. I think the safer way to do it would be to do it like uh, the more general way, I would say.
would be that. All right, so now they want this in standard form. So to write this in standard form, I'm going to have to FOIL this. So we have x plus three, x plus three plus one. So this is gonna be x squared plus six x plus nine plus one. I'm gonna distribute that too. equal to 2x squared plus 12x plus 19. So this would be at 2, at 12, and at 19, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for that, guys. Hopefully, you do better uh, next time. Let me know if you have any questions.